Join us now for a moment of faith with Dr. Joe Arthur, pastor of the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesboro, Georgia. This is an internet broadcast that will air daily at 12.30 p.m. and will remain on our Harvest Facebook page for you to view at any time. This broadcast is to uplift God's children and to remind us all that faith is a victory that overcometh the world. Now here's our pastor with a moment of faith, Dr. Joe Arthur. And greetings today to all of our watching and listening friends, and we welcome you to another moment of faith. We thank the Lord that every day this time we get to come to your place of listening and enjoy the blessings of God together. As Brother Don Collins used to say, Lord God, children, we're going to pull our feet under God's table and we're going to ring it out with a shout. And so we're going to have a great time today. Glad to have with us in our recording studio this week, Brother David Braddy. David, how you doing, I'm buddy? I'm doing fine, Brother Joe. Oh, I love this guy. I, I preached for Brother Chris Hayslip for the first time when he pastored Friendship Baptist. Now, let me get this right. On the Elon Ossipee, That's yeah, it. Elon Elon Ossipee, Ossipee Road. Road in the Burlington, Elon area. And they had a revival sweep through there. Uh, in the early 90s. Yeah, 91, 92, 93. And this man here and his wife, Angie, who's absolutely precious, they got saved. Yes. And God revolutionized their life. Amen. And I came in, and, and you know, David, that's been for me, I don't know about you, but that's been for me several pounds ago. Yes. <laughs> and several hairs ago. <laughs> yes. But I, I, I remember you and Angie, honey, sitting on that front row. You got your hands in there. You just a squalling. And the Rollins is a singing, and I'm a preaching, and Chris has got that choir pump. Yes, sir. And, buddy, they's riding piggyback down there hey, one man. night. <laughs> uh, I remember one night uh, they called on Ron Martin with the Rollins to, to, to pray. And I'd never heard Ron pray in public. I've heard him pray in private many times. He's a prayer warrior. Yes, and, uh, but I thought this would be interesting. I've heard Ron sing and never heard him pray. And he got up and Brother Chris said, Brother Ron, I just feel like the Holy Spirit wants you to close in prayer. And, and only like Ron Martin could do. He, he threw that head back and he started singing a cappella, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven. And all day, so by the time he got to thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Honey, they throwing flower pots and riding people. <laughs> Amen. And we were having a great time. Yes, and then sir. God God not only saved Brother David, called him to preach. Yes. And Brother Chris ordained you. Yes. And you pastored uh, Piedmont Baptist in Burlington for a while. Yep. I preached for you there. Over six years. And then 20 years ago, he moved down to the east coast of North Carolina to Carolina Beach. I bet you had family calling you, friends calling you. Hey, buddy, let me come see you. <laughs> and uh, he's been down there t 20 years. It's hard to believe. Yes, sir. And just did a great work for God. I was with him a few months back. And uh, David's visiting with us this Sunday. Uh, he spoke for us last Sunday night. And uh, uh, Brother David, uh, there's a lot of people that watch this program every day that are going through heartaches, difficulties, troubles, trials. And sometimes, uh, sometimes the devil tells them it's over. You can't get beyond this. And uh, sometimes he can be pretty convincing. Yes, sir. But I'm glad, I'm glad, praise God, that there is life yes, it on is. the other side. Yes, it is. And uh, you and your wife experienced uh, a tragedy, a, a tragedy that's, that's probably no worse tragedy, the loss of a child, your son Adam, whom I loved and adored. And, uh, and I know how y'all have wept, you've cried, and, uh, but God's, God's give you grace. Yes, he has. A measure of grace. Yes, he has. Your and Angie still have a song. Yes, we do. You still have a smile. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've watched you from a distance. 
and and just admired the grace of God. And uh, Brother David, is there anything that you could say to our internet audience today, those who are going through valleys and storms and troubles and trials, is there anything you could say to them in just a few moments that could encourage their hearts? Well, there is, and, and thank you, Brother Joe, for inviting us down and, and being with you, and uh, I am honored and humbled to to be here and to share just a little bit of, of uh, what God did for my wife and I uh, before we were married, I'm sorry, after we were married, we uh, were not saved for 10 years and we tried to have children for those 10 years. And doctors told us that we couldn't, uh, we couldn't have children. And so in 1990, we uh, got saved and we had a little prayer meeting in that little white building there on Williamson Avenue. Ah, uh, yes, sir. In Elon and uh, Miss Wendy's mother and my wife agreed together. It was a Christmas Eve. There were six of us in the church that night. And they agreed together that God would bless us with a child. And uh, October the 19th of 1992, and God gave us a little boy. Our little boy was born club-footed. His little feet were turned just like this, and it never never bothered me a bit. People would look at him, and, and of course, they felt sorry for him and us, but it, it was my little boy, and uh, it wasn't long. The doctor began to work on his, on his feet and put a cast on his feet, week, week, alternating, and uh, worked on him. Nine months old, he had uh, an operation on his Achilles tendon, and stretched them, and for about 14 months he was walking. And I had prayed since he was born, Lord, just let him walk, just let him walk. And it wasn't long we was praying, Lord, let him stop. Oh, yeah. Lord, let him stop. He is all over the church, just a bundle of joy. And, of course, through the years of growing up and uh, moving to the coast and uh, him going to the from Christian school to public school, it was like we threw him to the wolves. And uh, he got up in his teen years, began to experiment with drugs, and of course, everything that parents fear uh, will realize. And and that, and we we tried to work with him, and he understood. He was very honest with us about the things that he was doing. But in all of his all of his uh, rowdiness and wandering, in all of that, he never stopped coming to church. I know that. He never stopped inviting people to church. He never stopped calling me on the phone and said, Dad, I'm down here on the beach. There's, there's people down here that are going hungry. Can we do something to help them? Oh, my. In all of that, in all of that, he was still, I called him my little evangelist. He was a prodigal evangelist. And uh, anyway, he, he got saved three times, and I know a lot of you understand what I'm saying. Through the years, children will make a profession, and I baptized him, and and I baptized him three times, preacher. And uh, he knew every fish by name. <laughs> but uh, one night, one night, uh, he had gotten saved, truly born again, on January the 30th of uh, 2011. And he did good for 40 days. He did wonderful. And one Wednesday evening, somebody kept calling him, bothering him. And I heard him on the phone saying, leave me alone, leave me alone. I don't do that no more. And uh, we had another young gentleman living with us at the time, and, and Josh was a, uh, was a good boy. And uh, so Wednesday night, we all went to bed. And Thursday morning, I was awakened by a knock on my bedroom door, and Josh said, Preacher, preacher, come quick. Something's happened to Adam. I knew he was dead. I knew he was dead. I, you know, I, no, no parent ever thinks no. about that. And I went up, and, and he was laying in his bed. He was dead. My wife came running up, and she began to scream, David, do something. David, do something. So I tried to give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and I, I knew it was too late. And I looked at my wife, 
And for the first time in our marriage, I said, Honey, I can't help him. I'm helpless. And I'm telling you what, we were low. We were, we were devastated. We were cut off at the knees. We were gut punched. We were just absolutely heartbroken. And God puts you through a, a shock at that time. And you're numb for a period of time because you've got to go through uh, funeral arrangements. You've got to go buy a, a, a plot. You've got to buy a headstone. You've got to do these things. And no parent would ever think that they would do this for a child, our only child, the child that, that God gave us. And we prayed and prayed, Lord, bless him. Give him a good wife. Bless him with children. And, Lord, we, we're, we're looking forward to that day when maybe we'll have some grandchildren. Those things never came to pass. And there were questions in my mind. I, I, I questioned God. Lord, I've been praying for this boy. You gave him to us. I prayed that you'd use him. I prayed that he'd get married. I prayed for his wife since he was born. And I said, none of this will come to pass. I said, all of these prayers have gone unanswered. And I and my wife both went through a very dark time. But let me tell you this. We never, we never turned our backs on God. Oh, my. Never. We understand that everything he does is for his glory oh my. and for our good. Oh my. And so we just had to look at it that way. And we, we had a choice. We could get bitter or we could get better. And we chose the latter. Oh my. We chose to follow God. Two oh. days after Adam died, preacher, my pastor, Pastor Hazlip, rushed down on the day, stayed the night, and I was just absolutely sobbing uncontrollably. And I've done it many times in the last 10 years. And that's okay. Moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, whoever you are, it's okay. God's made us emotional. But he told me, he said, Brother David, you've got a ministry. Yep. You're a pastor. And he said, we don't know. Maybe, maybe Adam would have struggled. He... He did a drug that was so powerful it, it took his life after one, one dose. He said he may have gotten hooked and you may have struggled with this. You may have gotten phone calls. Somebody else may have been killed. We don't never know. And I, and, and I didn't understand it at the time. I, I got mad at him. How could he say such a thing that, that my son was gone and, and I had a ministry my ministry, he was part of my ministry, but I understood later on. And I tell people, it's like an athlete. You know, an athlete playing to his best potential, and many athletes today, especially in the National Football League, are injured, but they play. Yeah, play hurt. And they play hurt. And that's what I tell people. We're still playing, oh my. but we're playing hurt. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. It changed our lives forever. Now, this is not Star Wars, but we have a different destiny from what we thought God was leading us down. But we accept what God has given us, and we continue to go and grow and let God use us. God bless you, Dave. And any time that we can help people, it's it's a great opportunity. It's, it's still... It's still tough. It's still raw. It's still new. And it always will be. I think every every person that's ever lost a loved one, please don't think that, that you got to get over it. That's right. Don't, don't, don't let anybody else tell you you've got to get over it. You don't get over it. You just learn to play hurt. There's a piece of me that was in here that's there. And that's why my future is a whole lot greater than my past. Oh and I'm my. looking forward to it, preacher. Brother Dave, aren't you glad for the glad reunion in the sky? Yes, sir. And I, I know that's hard for you to talk about, but I just felt like our listeners today could receive 
a blessing that you found faith to continue. Yes. Strength to continue. And as we as we leave the, the, the broadcast today, I want to just give you a line of Stuart Hamblin's gospel song from the mid-50s. It is no secret. What God can do for what he's done for others, I'm glad he can do for you. Amen. Dave, thanks for stopping by today. Thank you, preacher. And thank you for joining us today on A Moment of Faith. And I'm glad, as Kyle of Rowland said, sweet heaven's going to fix it all. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time on A Moment of Faith.